I've got some exciting news. The WPT has given me a bunch of golden passports into their huge $5 million free roll that goes on on December 13th at the win. This is a live tournament and it is a free roll. Each seat's worth $2,500. All you have to do to qualify to get into the drawing where I'll be giving away some of these golden passports is go to Club wptgold.com clubwptgold.com and sign up using the code BART. More information about that in the description. Tyler, you are our next caller. Where are you playing out of? This is a a 2-5 game uh, a little bit north of Austin, Texas. A little bit north? Let me me guess. Would it be... Now, if you're saying a little bit north, it could be Georgetown. It could be Temple. Yeah, I, I live in Temple. Yeah, but the, the game is in Colleen. It's at a, a room called uh, Just Jack Social. All right, so 2-5. Is it a match the stack or what? Un- uncapped. Uncapped. 2-5 uncapped. By the way, I lived in Leander for two and a half years. Uh, 2-5 uncapped, okay. Yep, and it's uh, this is after a live stream. So we had just played on a live stream for three and a half, four hours, and this is afterwards. We just got a, uh, a few new players. So there were kind of some 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 different stack sizes what live stream it, the just jacks social oh okay i think i've heard of that one gets a couple hundred people super uh super nice room the live stream is growing as well yeah okay so two five uncapped in colleen we are eight handed about 1500 effective Four, 1485 with the main villain eight handed 1485 effective yep okay so pre-flop, I opened with eight, nine of clubs from middle position to to 20. Okay. There was no straddle. There was, it was maybe, I'd say probably 75% of the time straddled and the straddles can be up to five X as well. So sometimes it's like two, five, 25, but this one didn't have a straddle. So this one doesn't have a straddle. Okay. So hero to 20 with nine, eight of clubs, no straddle. Okay. Mm-hmm. The button calls small blind calls and big blind calls button calls small blind calls and big blind call okay yep so texas heads up four ways yeah texas heads up <laughs> yeah so the flop was nine of diamonds four of hearts three of clubs nine of diamonds four of hearts three of clubs so you flop top hair backdoor club draw with nine eight of clubs okay yep so both the blinds check and I went pretty big here to 75. That is pretty big. That is definitely pretty big on a board like this in the sense of, you know, you're, you're, I mean, I would definitely bet for sure. Um, It's not that connected. Now, obviously, I think the adjustment that maybe you will sort of say that you're making here, Tyler, is that it's Texas and that on the flop, whether Tyler bets 25 or 75, it's going to get called by the same range. If that's true, then the bet should be 75, right? Right. I, I know I'm going to get called by King Jack of Diamonds or... I was just thinking any three or any four. Right, right. If you're still, if you're going to get called by the same range of hands and you're betting, like betting for value, does 9-8 of clubs favor to be the best hand against three people on 9-4-3? Absolutely. Especially if people are playing like 40 or 50% of hands, Right. It absolutely favors to be. The Especially in a time break game where the, where the ranges yeah. are just so much wider. So you look at this in like, you, you know, in a, in a theoretical sense, you'd be like, oh, bet smaller. You need to like, you know, you, you need to try to get these people to defend with worse. If they're going to defend with worse anyways, then by all means, size up, right? It's just, it's just not on paper. You look at it this and it's like, oh, it's really dry. That's a big bet. But I'm definitely trying to take your side on this one. So you go 75, okay. And the button calls, small blind calls, and the big blind calls. Button, small, they all call. Everybody calls. There you go. Yep, so we got 380. 380. Going going to the turn. 380 in the pot. Okay. So the turn is the five of spades, so it completes the full rainbow. Turns a five of spades. So now the pot, uh, the board is nine, four, three, five. That's not a great, boy, that's, it's interesting because when you look at this and you're like, well, what's a, what do I want to see here on the turn? Normally, normally you would think on a rainbow board when you bet like 9-8 that you would actually want to see like a disconnected high card. 
mm-hmm. like a king, queen, or jack, or something like that. I don't, this five actually, now it doesn't connect with top pair, but with what we're talking about when people are just over sort of over calling on the flop, like way peeling way too wide, what you're going to see on a nine, four, three board, I would see like an over distribution of hands, like six, seven, ace, deuce, right? Bottom end gut shots, pairs. And and the most likely sort of connecting cards that you play with a with a four would be like a five, right? Or like th- three three five. So you still might have the best hand here, but like for example, if you were starting to run like some sort of backdoor equity bluff, like say you had like jack ten of diamonds, this would be a terrible turn card to barrel. <laughs> you know. Now your hand though is like, well, should I just bet and get all like the pair plus straight trust to call? Should I just bet fold? And that's kind of like the the tack that the 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 sort of approach that I took. I felt like in Texas and a lot of these other games too, where yeah, I mean it's super loose, but it's not necessarily any more aggressive than any place else. I don't know your take with these particular players. If you agree with that, then you can just sort of like robustly continue to bet for value. You're probably going to end up having to check back river if you get called. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was. Pretty much just planning on bet folding. Right, not okay. really going to give anybody credit for raising this turn right. as a bluff, especially full rainbow. Yeah, yeah. So both the blinds check again, and I went pretty big again, kind of as a merge bet, just figuring I'm going to get called by 5-6. I'm going to fold out high card equity, and I also maybe will start to fold out hands like 9-10 or jack-9 just when I go so big twice i think the the guys in the middle so the button in the small blind may fold out a better nine here so what you're saying is you're making a combo bet right? kind of yeah so what is he that, com- that was my thought process combo bet this is a funny term because i don't know if i made this one up or not we used to talk about this way back in the day on live at the bike and it took us like years to sort of refine the definition because at first the definition didn't make sense called by getting better to Better to fold, but worse to call. That's the opposite, right, of what we think of about betting. But but what it is is like you get the better made hands to fold and the worse to call in the form of draws. And it typically can only happen like in a multi-way spot. By the way, there's no combo bet on the river. That doesn't make any sense, usually on the river, because there's no more draws to call. I don't, so what, what kind of sizing are you going to use here? So I went to 300, so a little over three quarter pot. The button, the small blind, the big blind. So you're in the so you're in the middle, right? You've got one guy behind you, and then two guys have checked to you. So it goes check, 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 check. Hero 300. I mean, I like the way that you've talked through this, Tyler. I don't necessarily. I, I think it, this might be overly optimistic. I think I might just go like 150 to help hope to check it down. This whole thing about like, I might get a guy in the blinds to like fold a better nine and then get other people to call with draws might be a little bit far reaching person, I think in this spot. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was probably a little bit too big. I think, I think 200 or, or 175, 150 probably accomplishes the the same thing, but I, I wanted to go big because I just am not going to give any, if, if I go like 150, I think somebody may raise off with five, six at this point. But when I go so big, I just don't think I'm getting raised as a bluff ever. Well, I mean, may, yeah, I mean, maybe may, five, six. Yeah. I mean, again, the board's rainbow, so no one can do it on the back, back door side. Someone else brings up a good, well, but someone else brings up a point. I think it was Street Soul Lover that you're, you know, you're saying that they're calling with King Jack on the flop, but now they're going to fold out a better nine on the turn. Like that doesn't necessarily sound like congruent. And I think that was kind of what I was going with where I wouldn't expect someone to necessarily fold out a better nine. So I think that's where the whole part of, well, you're not going to get raised as a bluff. I just don't think that you're going to get fold a better nine in between. So personally, I either would have Checked or be- I think I still probably bet to try to get it to check down personally from the response I've seen. I just haven't. I, I think where I'm from the setups that I saw in Texas, I I wouldn't expect to get raised by five six here for one fifty. But okay, so you go three hundred. 
So the the button folds, the small blind folds, and the big blind calls. So fold, fold, call. Yep. So nine nine eighty. All right. Well, I mean, that's not the worst thing, right? That happened there, right? Yeah. Pretty pretty uh, decent result. And now I'm basically just planning on checking back every river except a nine or an eight. Right. All right. So now the pot's nine eighty, and what is the river? The river is the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades. So the board is nine four three five Ace. So it puts out a one liner here to a deuce. Puts a one liner out here to a deuce. Okay. So obviously, if you if it goes, if the guy checks, you're going to check it back, right? Yeah, but he uh, just decides he thinks for maybe three or four seconds and just donk jams for about eleven hundred. Ten ten ninety. The big blind donk jams for 1090. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, anytime you look at this at even somewhat low stakes poker, you think, well, you know, do people make donk? I mean, do, is this a deuce or is this a straight or nothing? Is this a straight or nothing bet? But then you look at like, what is the nothing portion and you go to a small stakes exploit that we have, which is like, you should f over fold or you should fold when the bluffs would be paired because right. the, no the nothing portion of this really almost has to contain a pair in it. Like it would be like five, six. No way he can't have air after calling two big bets. He can't really have any air. So it's a situation where it's like, all right, well now is he doing this with like four, six? Is he doing it with like five, six? By the way, he could still have the stone cold nuts here some of the time here too. Although that is a little bit strange to like donk jam a scary river. The other really sort of kind of um, weird part of this, or you'd say weird or just strange is that if he had aces up here, like if he had aces up, let's say he still called with like ace five, right? On the turn. Yeah, whatever. Pair plus gut shot. He should bet the river. It's not like you have a deuce here. And you're going to be checking back all over pairs at the end. But you wouldn't think that he would take this type of sizing though, right? Yeah, that was that was exactly what, what I was thinking. I thought his only value really would be maybe pocket deuces that peels the flop, turns open-ended, and now rivers the straight. But or Or ace nine suited, which there's one combo of. But... After I bet so big twice, my range is just going to contain so many overpairs like kings and queens that I wouldn't think that somebody's just going to come out and donk overbet jam when my range just looks like kings, queens, jacks. That's just going to think of this as a scare card. If he has two pair or somehow a straight, I would have expected him to go like 500 or... or. So you think that this bet size represents the fact that he either has 6-7... A deuce, whether he made it with like four deuce, five deuce, or he had like deuce six, or he's turning like five, six, or four, six, or three, six, or something like that into a bluff. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, so, something like that. But I, I, I don't really want to even expect him to turn like four, six, or five, six into a bluff. I, I, I guess potentially five, six is what I was thinking. I think four, six. Well, I guess four six. Well, if you if they, if you don't expect those hands to if you don't expect those hands to turn anything into a bluff, then what are you left with here at the end? Yeah, that's what I couldn't really figure out. This is probably the longest I've ever tanked. It was probably like five minutes. Well, if you're left with no bluffs, then you should fold, right? <laughs> well, I feel like I'm also left with basically no value either. Why can't he do that? Why? Because of the sizing, you mean? Yeah, because because what what hand for value would would he take this sizing with? Well, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. I mean, it, that that in itself is strange. But if you told me he's going to roll, if you called somehow and he rolls over like six seven, it wouldn't be that shocking to me, to be honest with you. Yeah, that, or a deuce. I, I, I knew six seven or ace deuce would be a possibility. Although the ace at the end reduces the ace deuce, but also either one of those would have turned a straight. And when I bet so big and it just looks like I have an overpair, I would have expected him to just check jam the turn just because nobody in Texas is folding overpairs. 
So when it looks like I have an overpair and he makes the nuts, I would just expect him to jam the turn. So then you're just left with him having a deuce, but then you're confused about the sizing at the end. Yeah, either deuce, deuce, or one combo of ace, nine suited. Ace, nine offsuit too, I guess. I don't even, yeah, yeah, but that in itself is straight. I personally, I would fold. I wouldn't think too much about it. But what did you end up doing? Yeah, so the the big bet just confused me. I couldn't really figure anything out. Um, so I ended up calling, and he had eight, nine of spades, and we chop. That is bizarre. So he was turning his hand into a block. Well, <laughs> You know what that brings up is another bad, bad factor here for you, which is somehow if he's turning a nine into a bluff here and you lose. Right. If he has like nine, 10 or something. Then I mean, I... he's in the, he's in the big blind, right? So he's getting a price pre it's Texas and it's loose. So that means that like, he's going to be V pipping the nines with a higher kicker on the offsuit side more like he's going to have like king nine off queen nine off jack nine off way more than like nine six off well i guess well all these other ones are all two pair anyways nine five nine four nine three nine deuces is straight but the only thing you beat here is nine seven and nine six right you're losing to ten nine you're lo- that's one thing that we didn't take into consideration we didn't think a nine would have to but i mean that would have sucked if you turned over ten nine Right. Yeah, I would have been. I would have been pretty sick to see ten nine. I just, <laughs> I, I just really didn't expect hands like this to be turned into a bluff. Yeah, uh, that's that's. Well, you definitely get some bizarre, bizarre stuff in in live poker. But uh, again, I go back to the the whole thing though. Uh, at the end though, on the river, I mean, I understand what you're saying about that he would be check jamming or check raising a lot with straights and stuff on the turn. I do think that your flop, your turn sizing is too big. I would either go smaller or maybe sometimes check. But I appreciate the call. Thank you very much.